One question I often see on forums is, how do I consolidate multiple worksheets into a nice summary? Well, for example, we've got separate projects on different sheets, and I want to get a nice summarized report, which I can then beautifully filter and select individuals. And it's all about mastering Power Query. Let's go. So the first thing to know is that Power Query needs named ranges or tables to consolidate. So what I'm going to do is highlight this range on this sheet. This is project one and I'll name it project one. Okay. And I'll repeat that for project two, which I've already done, project three, here we go. Okay. And etc. So all the different projects, we'll just give them named ranges. Now I'll go back to project one and we go to data from table slash range. This will then pull this table in. Here we have our first little quirk of Power Query. Sometimes it does this, it puts a change type step in where we do not need it. So we can get rid of that. Then I'm going to use my first row as headers. But then this change type kicks in and hard codes all these dates. That's horrendous. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. The magic of Power Query, right click, unpivot other columns. Whenever you see dates going across the top, unpivot them. So I've now got a nice column of dates. I've also got these empty values. Now nulls normally disappear. So let's just rename this as hours. And we will get rid of the zeros. And there's these blanks. Okay. Awesome. Okay, then uh, we will go to this one. This is the date. And first things, let's just try and change it to a date. We get an error. Sometimes it happens. So what do I do here? Well, I just want to extract the date. And actually, I've got the word total down here as well at various places. That's the end result. I don't need that. So I'm going to filter out the word total. Okay. And scrolling down here, I've also got totals down here, so I might as well filter out totals at this point. Always make sure you look at your formula bar to see what's going on, that you're definitely filtering out certain things you're selecting. Okay, the date, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to extract the everything before the space. So transform, extract, text before delimiter, Okay, I'm not sure why it's not converting to a date. I'm just going to put a space there. Click OK and turn that into a date. Beautiful. Okay. And this is going to be a, let's make it a decimal number. And this text. Okay. So this is just doing project one. I don't want to have to do that over and over again for every project. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a little function that can run against every project table and do these steps. So the first thing you have to do is create a little parameter. So here we go, manage parameters, new parameter. And I'm gonna call that parameter, um, let's call it project name. Okay. And we should put a description in there. Then we'll say, okay, it's text and the current is project one. That's the current name of the table and click okay. And it pops out here, project one. What we'll call this is the um, cleanup. It's gonna be the cleanup query. And the important thing is this, this source step, that's what refers to project one. So we just need to replace that and do it carefully because typos are a pain with the parameter project name. Okay, give it a tick. Nothing happens because it's actually just picking up project one from here and everything should work beautifully. 
So what I want to do now is get a list of table names or a list of range names, project one, project two, etc., and then run that little function against each one. So I don't actually have that. When you're pulling queries from within Excel, um, you can't really get access to it. If you're pulling it from a separate workbook, it's easier, but within the workbook, it's a bit trickier. So what we do, just for this scenario, I'm just gonna close and load this too, and say connection only, only create connection. Okay, there it is. And what I'm gonna do is, I've got a little list here of all my project names. And I'm just gonna pull this table in and use it to run my function against. So here's my table from table range. Okay. I don't need the other columns so I can remove other columns. And I'm gonna add a custom column, but invoke a custom function. So here we go. Here's my function. Ah, rookie error. I haven't created my function yet. So what I need to do is go back to my cleanup. I have added a parameter in here. That's one of the basic principles of creating a function. I need to right click on cleanup and create a function from it. You can only do this once you put a parameter in your query, okay? So turn this into a function, call it fn cleanup. Okay, that's now my little function. All those items are in that little group, the parameter, the original query. I go here, I can now invoke a custom function. The function is function cleanup, and it's gonna get the project name from this named range column. Click OK, and there it is, there's the cleanup. And all I have to do is expand this out and click OK, and there's all my data from all my different sheets beautifully consolidated. Okay, so this is now project name. Highlight these three, transform detect data type. Beautiful, okay, and I'll just name this consolidation. And that is done. So I can now load this into Excel. So home, close and load, load two. And I've got a choice. I could either load it into a sheet. Let me just do that to show you, existing worksheet just here. Okay, in which case I could then update any of these projects right click here go for refresh it'll run consolidate them all again beautiful if i add a new project i type the name in here i make sure i name the range click refresh uh, the alternative load two okay only create a connection add to the data model you get a warning saying this table is going to disappear this is now loading into the data model or power pivot as it's known Right, so then I can insert a pivot table with all this data. So I can go hours. I can then say, uh, I wanna see by date. And let's group, right click group by days, months, and years. Really, you should start getting into the whole power pivot and calendar tables and stuff like that. But for simple things, let's just stick with this. So here we go, and we can, let's say, I. I'm going to collapse this, right click, collapse entire field. Awesome, pivot table analyze, pivot chart. Okay, when you do a chart this way though, the date is not right, so I need to come back in here, show the field list. These items need to come into my rows, day, month, and day. Okay, so here's my little chart, and don't need day, that'll do. And let's just change my chart type to a one I prepared earlier, that one there. Beautiful. Okay, and then you can start adding slices. So for project name and for resource name. And with a bit of prettying up, you've now got a dynamic chart from all that data. 
And all you have to do is data refresh and any new data you add to your project tables will be consolidated. So I hope you find that useful. Please subscribe if you want to keep up to date with these sorts of videos. Give me a like and we will see you later.